for dead. But where's the driver? The MCG falls silent as football finally returns. Nick Nat reveals the Eagles' plan to take a stand against racism. Cities on edge amid plans for mass Black Lives Matter rallies and fears of a fresh COVID outbreak. Movies and TV shows banned in new anti-racism protests. And finally, some clarity for Fremantle forward Cam McCarthy after his shock collapse. Why he won't play this weekend. Live from our Perth headquarters, this is 7 News with Susanna Carr and Rick Arden. Good evening and welcome to 7 News. A joyride on a stolen dirt bike has left a teenage boy and a young woman horrifically injured and sparked a citywide police manhunt. The couple smashed into a car near Midland last night. Detectives say the driver of the vehicle did nothing wrong. That was until he panicked and left the couple for dead. What's about to happen is hard to watch. Two people thrown from a dirt bike, flung metres into the air after a crash with a car. The bike's headlights are off. As the car turns into a driveway, it comes out of nowhere. Police say the driver of the sedan panicked, pausing momentarily before doing a U-turn and taking off. The couple were left lifeless and alone. An ominous dent left on the side of the car. 17-year-old rider AJ Prosser and 20-year-old Chantel Murray were on the bike. They survived, but only just. I've seen my brother last night in that situation. Um, my heart just crumbled. It broke. And then seeing my best mate like that there... It happened just before 6.30 last night on Muriel Street in Vivash. Police say the bike was stolen and unlicensed. They only found one helmet. Police say drivers who leave the scene of a crash where someone has serious or life-threatening injuries could face jail. The maximum penalty is 14 years behind bars. Detectives are tonight closing in on the driver following a trail of CCTV from after the crash. So I strongly suggest that he hand himself into the local police station. Detectives say if he'd only just stopped, he wouldn't have been in trouble him for leaving when AJ and Chantel needed him the most. As we go to air tonight, AJ Prosser and Chantel Murray are both here at Royal Perth Hospital in induced comas. The couple suffered serious head injuries uh, that, that... This won't be the last moment of support. All teams will rally behind the Black Lives Matter movement. It's an issue Nick Natanui understands better than most. Yeah, racism's never fun. Um, yeah, I've had it my whole life. I've had it since I was a kid. Oh, I've been called everything. I've been called everything under the sun. Um, yeah, both on the field and off the field. Yeah, the George Floyd stuff was hard to watch. And then, yeah, the ripple effect, I think it just gets everyone speaking. Probably the biggest thing, it's created a conversation. The Eagle star would be front and centre at Perth's protests, but for now, he'll have to use his profile to spread the word. If there was no COVID restrictions, I'd definitely be there. I'd be, I'd be helping lead the charge with everyone out there. Natanui says now is the time for understanding and to ask questions if you don't get it as some confuse the message. Yeah, all lives do matter. And that's when people say that, um, I understand what they're saying. But at this point in time, um, yeah, focusing on black lives. There's clarity in hub life too, with WA set to host the next hub, a relief. It's good that we've got a hub back in WA because then some of the other teams from, I guess, Victoria have to come and, and travel and do what we're doing over here. Today, another powerful voice, Police Commissioner Chris Dawson, back to the WA hub. I'll give you a scoop. I'm all for it. And Ryan joins us now from the Gold Coast. And Ryan, there's a diagnosis for Cam McCarthy. That's right, Sue. As we know, he collapsed at training last week. He had tests with neurologists and cardiologists for three days. And now, finally, some clarity for Cam McCarthy. He's been diagnosed with epilepsy. Now, that obviously means he won't play for the Fremantle Dockers this weekend. But it doesn't mean his career is over. Plenty of athletes play with epilepsy. In fact, Buddy Franklin has epilepsy and has had seizures in the past. So it's not great news for Cam, but at least it is manageable. Now, some more Dockers news. Jesse Hogan will not play for the Fremantle Dockers against Brisbane this weekend. He will play in the reserves, but his comeback to the top level will have to wait at least another week. There are three changes for Fremantle and one for West Coast. Baz will have those teams later in sport. Rick? 
Thanks, Ryan. WA police will ignore calls by the Prime Minister to charge people joining in a Black Lives Matter rally in Perth on Saturday. The Commissioner says his officers will take no action against the thousands planning to attend unless the protest gets out of hand. State political editor Jeff Parry reports. There's a nervous wait on the East Coast to see how many COVID-19 cases might emerge from last weekend's total disregard to spread of the disease. One positive case has already emerged from the Melbourne Black Lives Matter march. The lesson here is that it's not over for Victoria. In New South Wales, police have gone back to court to declare its next mass gathering illegal. The Prime Minister has called for protesters to face criminal prosecution. Do not go to those rallies. You are putting others' lives at risk. In Perth, 8,000 people have registered to attend Langley Park on Saturday, eight times more than the Forest Place protest on June 1st. Those numbers make it impossible to stop. Police say they will only get involved if there's trouble. Commissioner Chris Dawson says the Prime Minister should leave it to those who know what they're doing. The Prime Minister won't be there at the front line uh, at Langley Park on Saturday. Um, I've got officers that do that sort of job all the time. Organisers have been told they should abandon or postpone the protest because of the threat from the virus. People are willing to risk their lives for this. This is a cause that is worthy of that. And our lives are being risked every day anyway. George Floyd, God rest his soul, has opened the door for us. WA Senator Pat Dodson worried about the potential health consequences. I think it's very sound advice that the police are giving. Uh, people are making other decisions though. Authorities are worried a new outbreak of the virus will delay the further easing of restrictions. Despite growing calls to drop WA's hard borders to allow interstate travel, in the public's eyes the Premier can do little wrong. A poll commissioned by Seven West Media has his popularity at a still sky-high 87%, dropping just two points in the last few weeks. I think what's occurred in Victoria overnight uh, shows that our approach has been correct. Jeff Parry, Seven News. A man who mowed down a police officer during a high-speed chase has been sentenced to more than five years behind bars. The 22-year-old driver was severely intoxicated when he swerved to avoid a road trap, hitting an officer who also plays for the Dockers in the AFLW. The moment half an hour of chaos comes to a crashing end. Police closing in on Dwayne Winmar minutes after he mowed down one of their own. Officer Anne McMahon deployed a stinger on Tonkin Highway to stop the hoon. But he swerved. That's when he hit her, sending the AFLW player flying 24 metres. The 22-year-old didn't stop there, continuing to evade police before this. The court heard he was more than three times over the legal alcohol limit and on a suspended prison order when he got behind the wheel of the stolen car, driving dangerously on footpaths and on the wrong side of the road before reaching 150 kilometres on Tonkin Highway before he hit Officer McMahon, sentenced to five years and nine months behind bars. Were you pretty shocked to hear what happened? Yeah, I was. I, was, um, I thought he would have got more. The impact this accident has had on Officer McMahon's life is profound. The court heard she thought she'd never walk again and without surgery on both knees would have been permanently disabled. She now fears her dreams of playing in the AFL Women's League are over. She'll be back in this uniform again next month as she returns to the force in a non-operational role. As for the man who almost cost her her life, he could be free in three years' time. Amber Johnston, 7 News. A police officer has been cleared of assault but left out of pocket after punching a suspect he claims grabbed for his gun. Senior Constable Guy Little's case will spark an internal review after claims he was let down by a partner who didn't have his back. He walked into the court, accused, walked out, free and keen to return to the beat. Yes, always. After a case the police union says was a beat up, senior constable Guy Little admitted punching suspect Cal Sharp twice, kneeing him once. Did you try to grab his gun? No. Did you touch the gun? Maybe by accident. Unlikely, the magistrate decided, but possible, ruling the officer deserved the benefit of the doubt during a violent and dynamic arrest of a man high on meth. 
because records show his untruthful partner, the prosecution's star witness, armed his taser twice, suggesting Sharp never stopped resisting. This has been uh, emotionally uh, and physically tolling on him. The case took 19 months, cost taxpayers at least $16,000 in defence costs alone, cost senior constable Guy Little much more. And Magistrate Brian Gluestein says it all could have been avoided if he had been issued a body camera. I totally agree that body cameras uh, are giving the courts much better evidence. They're now available to all police, little or not. Jessica Page, 7 News. There's now an estimate of what a second wave of COVID-19 would cost our economy. It's predicted we'd be facing a $25 billion hit, but there is some good news. So far, we've avoided the worst of the damage. Re-emerging from the economic fog of the pandemic, the outlook is becoming clearer. Australia stands out as a leader in the economic recovery. An OECD assessment of world economies finding if Australia avoids a second wave of infection, the hit to GDP will fall from 8.5% to 5 and unemployment won't peak at 10% but 7.6%, better than most countries. That compares to 7.3% in the United States, 8% in Canada, 8.9% in New Zealand, 11.5% in the United Kingdom. But a warning on the withdrawal of JobKeeper payments. The OECD suggesting some income support measures may need to be extended beyond their September expiry date to allow businesses to rebuild. They need to make sure that we have a transition rather than a snapback that will snap communities. And a second wave would snap the economic recovery. The OECD predicting it would cost the economy $25 billion and wipe out businesses and jobs. We are looking at the, all of those matters extremely carefully. And accepting responsibility for the robo-debt debacle, saying sorry to victims. I would apologise to any... Um, any hurt or harm in, in the way that the government has, has dealt with that issue. Before taking this crack at Anthony Albanese... This leader of the opposition would not have a clue. The fog of political war. Mark Riley, 7 News. A new wave of censorship is sweeping the globe in the wake of the Black Lives Matter protests, with movies, TV shows and statues being removed. The classic Gone with the Wind is disappearing from screens in the US, while here a popular comedian's been dumped by Netflix, move slammed by some as cultural vandalism. When Gone with the Wind was released in 1939, it garnered eight Oscars, including the first for an African-American actor, Hattie McDaniel. Oh, now, nah, Miss Scarlett. Gone with the Wind is but one example of a, of a film that portrays back blacks in an unrealistic and unflattering light. The movie has been temporarily pulled from HBO and will reappear with appropriate messaging. Where do you draw the line? Is it, should George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and James Madison be erased from history? Here, Netflix has dropped four series from comedian Chris Lilly. Some where he portrays characters in blackface. You give hip hop a bad name. Little Britain, dumped from TV and streaming too. The most visible removals are of statues. This statue was erected in 1879 and has been vandalised many times. Most recently in 2018 with the words, no pride in genocide. But was Captain James Cook racist? Were his actions? And should his statue be torn down? Some suggest adding a plaque to provide context. Others want it removed. I think it's a dreadful cultural vandalism. I think that uh, it's a looting of our history. Ironically, it was Churchill who made the point in a speech to Parliament, those who fail to learn from history are condemned to repeat it. Brian Seymour, 7 News. Where the protest movement began, the brother of George Floyd has today pleaded with American politicians to stop the pain. As the country grapples with police reform, protesters have taken aim at a long-standing symbol of controversy with some success. The day after burying his brother, Philonis Floyd came to Washington to demand his death not be in vain. He pleaded for his life. He said he couldn't breathe. Nobody cared calling for police reform with accountability, empathy, respect and use of deadly force only when life is at risk. When you watch your big brother, who you looked up to for your whole life, die, die begging for his mom, I'm here to ask you to make it stop. 
Stop the pain. He then took his message to the streets, joining protesters near the White House. In Minneapolis, the police chief promised an early warning system to identify troublesome officers like Derek Chauvin. I would not be in the same room with him, and I refuse to mention his name. Another fired officer charged with aiding and abetting George Floyd's murder was today released on bail. While the White House works on its plan for reform, today Donald Trump talked about his successes. Well, we've done a lot for the black community and we've done a lot for all communities. But it's more than policing in the spotlight. Protesters calling for the removal of Confederate statues. A push to rename military bases named after Confederate officers already shot down. But the Confederate flag will no longer fly over NASCAR, today banned from the track. In the United States, Paul Kadak, 7 News. TV presenter Rebecca Judd's activewear label has been accused of copying a rival's designs. Jagged denies the allegations, and experts say legally it's a grey area between what's a rip-off and what's the current fashion. Two popular activewear labels locked in a war of words. Chris and Beck Judd's Jagged brand accused of copying the designs of Byron Bay label Nagnata. Nagnata is popular with celebrities. This top, worn by actress Kate Hudson, sells for $345. On Instagram, they posted, if this Australian brand is going to keep copying Nagnata and ignoring our emails, then we're going to start calling them out. At the heart of the dispute, striped sweaters. Fans of the Judd's label have come to their defence. It's got different logo, different colours. I don't think they copied it. I don't think they'd copy a smaller company's um, designs. Jagged says it has confirmed ownership of its own designs and steadfastly rejects any assertions of any intellectual property infringement. Jagged says the knits in question are made with fabric commonly used by other companies, including Nike. Experts say there is a grey area when it comes to determining what's a straight-out copy and what's been inspired by current trends. They are not designing in a bubble or a vacuum. They're designing um, and they're, those designs are informed by the works of others. A fashion furor that's definitely not black or white. Estelle Grey Pink, 7 News. Amelia Brune joins us now with an early look at the weather. And Millie, we had some solid showers across the city today. Oh, we sure started falling just as most people were waking up and it was pretty heavy for a few hours. Since 6am Perth's recorded 20 millimetres, 20 mils has fallen in the hills and Mandra 19. The show is off lunchtime and we even had some blue skies this afternoon. The cloud cover meant it stayed pretty mild overnight. Our minimum was 15 degrees and we hit 21.7 just after three this afternoon. We had northerly winds for most of the day. The sea breeze hit the city after midday and winds were a little stronger along the Mandra coast. Right now in Perth it is 24.4. We have some more wet weather to come and the chance of a storm. I'll have the forecast after the sport. Thanks, Millie. Up next, social media strife. The tweet that's now been deleted by the US Vice President. See why. See how a schoolgirl tried to fend off a man with a knife. How quick-thinking neighbours in Perth's north saved an elderly woman from her burning home. In sport at 6.45, no Cam McCarthy, no Jesse Hogan for Frio and another recruit hurt at training and out of this weekend's footy. And how to get a big boost at tax time. That's next. Seven News, brought to you by Industry Super Funds. I suddenly realised we're all in this together. That feels especially true, given what's going on. It is good to know that our super will help us and our economy bounce back. And if you're with one of these, your super is invested in things that create jobs and keep Aussie businesses strong, delivering good long-term returns that benefit all of us. After all, we're all in this together. Hold on tight. Big Brother's big week of big twists is just getting started. Big Brother is playing dirty. The eviction that'll cause a revolution. The king and queen are going to be dethroned. You wanted a show, you've got one. He's playing the game well and he's the threat. 
it can blow up bigger than Hiroshima. Big Brothers Big Week starts Sunday at 7 on 7. Businesses are facing an overwhelming amount of information. Business Australia can help you get the answers to your toughest questions with our free business advice lines. Get the support you need at businessaustralia.com. You know this horse is better value, and this horse is ready to go one better. That's why you deserve a better bet with Tab Touch. This Saturday, get boosted odds on races one to three at Eagle Farm. Better your bet with Tab Touch. Gamble responsibly. Wish you had internet that didn't let you down, that doesn't leave you hanging, and won't have you missing any of the action. Get Vodafone NBN with 4G backup. Plans start from just $55 a month. And with free express delivery, connect instantly once you receive it. Buy online today at vodafone.com.au. Ready? It's a new chapter in breast cancer treatment. Clinical trials, support services and more now all under one roof. From Global Leaders Breast Cancer Research Centre WA. Donate today to make a difference. Get your Woolies worth and save $10 off your online pickup shop when you enter code JUNE10 at the checkout. Minimum spend applies. Visit woolworths.com.au and start shopping today. That's why I pick Woolies. Set your sights even further ahead. Purchase from a selection of Audi models prior to June 30 and we'll include complimentary registration, stamp duty and CTP. Complimentary 5-year 75,000 km scheduled servicing and a 5-year manufacturer's warranty. This end of financial year, we're with you for the long term. Tasty, affordable and delicious. What's for dinner in the next break with Coles? A 12-year-old schoolgirl has been threatened at knife point by a man armed with a large kitchen knife in Highgate. The would-be thief walked into a deli where the girl was minding the counter for her parents. When her father realised what was happening, he picked up a pole and chased him off. The man was arrested by police shortly after. Three men are being hailed heroes for saving an 82-year-old from her burning home. The trio found her trapped inside, collapsed over her walking frame. They carried her out seconds before the roof caved in. Rescued, and not a second too soon. Any longer inside this home, 82-year-old Patricia Spiker would have been trapped under the collapsed roof. But she has three brave men to thank. They put their lives on the line to save hers. But her eyes opened up and she had a lot of black around her, her, na her nasal area. And we carried her out, but she was breathing. The fire started in her bedroom just before seven this morning on Scarcliff Way in Corrine. Through thick black smoke, Miss Spiker was able to walk with her frame to the back sliding door, where she collapsed just a step from safety. Neighbours knew she was inside, but couldn't get in because of the windows and doors being double glazed. I tried throwing garden chairs and things like that, but uh, couldn't do it. My wife brought up a matic. Uh, one of the guys used the matic to access the rear. It took eight swings with the axe to break the glass. Once neighbours were finally able to smash the glass, they found Miss Spiker at the back door. She was sitting on the ground, hunched over her walking frame. They pulled her to safety and say seconds later, the entire roof collapsed. For her to breathe those fumes for, she must have been breathing for 20 minutes and be alive, that's, that's incredible. Relief tinged with sadness. Her pet dog didn't make it. And hey, Seven News. The professor who advised Boris Johnson to put the UK into virus lockdown now says the death toll could have been halved had they done it just one week earlier. Neil Ferguson says the measures then were warranted, but with the benefit of hindsight, 20,000 lives could have been saved. Frankly, I think that uh, a lot of these questions are, are still premature and there are lots of things, lots of data, lots of uh, things that we still don't know and this epidemic has a, has a long way to go, alas. 
Lockdown began two weeks after the first coronavirus death. Professor Ferguson resigned for breaking the rules. Olympic organisers are working on a plan to simplify the already postponed Tokyo Games to cut costs and provide safety while still putting on a show. Organisers will look at reducing the number of people working on the event rather than cutting athletes or crowds. They're also open to changing the Games' long-standing protest ban, which has seen athletes sent home in the past. America's vice president has deleted this photo from social media showing him thanking a large crowd of campaign staff. Mike Pence says the head of the coronavirus task force dropped into what's thought to be the Virginia office where rules limit 10 people together at a time. President Trump is planning to hold a rally in Oklahoma next week. It's one of Europe's most prominent political killings compared by some to the assassination of JFK. Now, after three decades, the investigation into the murder of Swedish Prime Minister Olof Palme has been closed, but with the suspect dead, questions remain. In Sweden, the question of who killed Olof Palme has been a national obsession. 34 years on, it's case closed. I feel confident about the... Uh, findings that we have made. Palmer was gunned down in February 1986 after leaving a Stockholm cinema with his wife. Mrs Thatcher said Mr Palmer's loss will be felt throughout the world. It's a disaster for Sweden. A total disaster. A petty criminal was convicted of murder but acquitted. Prosecutors now believe the perpetrator was Stieg Engström, a graphic designer who worked close to the crime scene. He died in 2000. Palmer was a prominent left-wing figure, outspoken on on international issues. He fought for victims of injustice and against apartheid. You cannot reach security by increasing the arms race. The case was a magnet for conspiracy theories and Sweden's biggest criminal investigation. 10,000 people were interviewed, 134 falsely confessed to the crime. The case file at police headquarters takes up 250 metres of shelf space. An outcome is satisfying, says the former leader's son. It's a shame they don't have more evidence. No weapon, motive or justice. Sarah Greenolch, 7 News. Our senior bikey has avoided jail despite admitting to a drug raid bust. That's ahead. Last hundreds behind bars shock new figures on WA's unpaid fine shame. And new details on a teenage boy's mountain survival miracle. That's next. And how technology helped in a tangled whale rescue. No matter where they make us play, no matter where they make us train, no matter how they change the rules, the West always puts WA footy first. For West Australians, by West Australians. Your essential companion in a season like no other. This is for you, my son. Give me something to work with. I'm not going anywhere. Something doesn't add up. I'm going to find out what it is. No, stop! Stop, Grace! Stop! What am I supposed to do? Stay. Go on. You know you want it. Come home. To Home and Away, weeknights at 7 on 7. Hi guys, Michael Weldon here, back with another What's For Dinner. And today I've got a very special guest with me, Kevin Sheedy, in the house. We're celebrating one thing, footy's back on TV. That is. How excited are you? Uh, very excited <laughs> because uh, it's been a long wait. There's never been another year like this in the history of the game. And um, yeah, I think the fans are just yearning to see their teams play. Players play well, obviously. And of course, there's nothing better than um, going to the footy and having a, having a bit of tucker. Well, that's what I was thinking. Steak sandwich before the footy? What do you reckon? You're on the money right now. Yeah, there's there's a, a lot of pressure on the about. Out. Yeah, you better be good. <laughs> well, awesome. So, really quick and simple steak sandwich. Well, super simple and also very affordable. Just going to warm up with some vinegar, some water and some sugar in a little bowl. I've got some thinly sliced onions there, Kev. It's super easy. Bring it over and we'll pour that in. That's Just it. Let it. Let it. They can sit there. Relax. Don't touch. Don't touch. Um, 
10, 15 minutes, it's done. Yeah. All right, so next we're gonna do some cameras on the side of every great steak stand. Every great barbecue in Australia has cameras on. It's gotta have them. No. Um, yeah, chuck that pot on. Over here. Over there. Nothing here. Nothing in here. Put it on the hot plate. Hot plate. Wow. Drizzle of olive oil. A drizzle. That's perfect. Ah, ah, there you go. I hope my wife's watching this. Spoon to give them a stir. I've stirred all my life. <laughs> And then a pinch of salt, and that'll help them soften up. And while we do that, we're gonna cook our steak. Seriously good, dude. Yeah? So I've got some really thin steaks here. So all I do for this, sprinkle of sea salt, and then just a little drizzle of olive oil. We love that olive oil. We're gonna add them on there. You can do this on a barbie, you can do it in a pan. Just make sure you're cooking it with a really nice high heat. This pan's hot, 30 seconds each side. So you just wanna- 30 seconds. Get a nice sear, yeah. It's nice sear, and then it's a little bit of, bit of those little bar marks. What are you laughing? Super simple steak chain at least. And while you do that, I've got a bit of turkey spread here. So a nice big long roll. Yeah. I've got a bit of mayo on the bottom. And then I've just got some lettuce leaves. Tomatoes. Mustard on top. Now chuck on our slices of cheese. Double onion. This Double is that, onion. This is the special bit. Four quarters. Four beautiful beautiful steak sandwiches. Four quarters on a game of footy. Beautiful. Four sandwiches for four mates for under 20 bucks. Five dollars each. Less than five dollars each. We're gonna enjoy this. We're gonna watch a footy. Absolutely. This is Watch for Dinner. This is Kevin Sheedy. Thanks for watching. Happy eating. Go footy. A senior Mongols bikey has been given a suspended sentence after pleading guilty to drug charges. Clovis Shichonga was one of several bikies arrested, including notorious bikey Troy McCanty, as drugs and weapons were seized during a police raid in February. I'm sure you're very happy about that result. How are you feeling? Mr Chichonga must follow strict conditions. He admits it's inhumane, but the Attorney General says he couldn't stop two men being jailed without trial for unpaid fines. Seven News can reveal more than 500 people have been imprisoned, despite promises the practice would be stopped after the lock-up death of Ms Dew. Fair evasion isn't meant to be a jailing offence, but it was for Rocky Lou, caught with a bench warrant he didn't know about. For a few months, my mail was going to my old address and the fines kept on multiplying by then. Reaching $3,599. Unable to pay, he spent five days behind bars, missing work and his seven kids. What did you say to your four-year-old at the time? So oh, I just said Daddy went jail, you know, because uh, Mana said Dad got to pay money. He's not alone. Last year, 436 people were jailed for fine defaults. Already this year, 131 have gone to prison to pay off their debts. 40 of them were Aboriginal, 27 of them women. All of them poor. And then with the accumulation of court-ordered costs and penalties and breaches, they become impossible to pay off in a long time. Even though WA Labor promised it would change the law after the death of Ms Dew in a police cell in 2014. It's inhumane, unnecessary and other jurisdictions have done away with it years ago. I cannot get around the law without passing a new law. The Fines Enforcement Act was being debated here today and the changes are expected to pass, but it's too late for two men who are behind bars right now for nothing more than unpaid fines. They're not Indigenous. Campaigners say whatever their skin colour, they should be released. Well, we're in 2020 now and it's still happening. Until they are, she says not all lives matter. Jessica Page, 7 News. Miracle teenager Will Callahan is finally home after his epic ordeal in the Victorian bush. He was released from hospital this afternoon after being kept in overnight, but his grateful mum says he's remarkably well. Penny Callahan has barely slept since Will disappeared on Monday afternoon, but last night her son finally did. He has demonstrated what an amazing person he is. The 14-year-old who has autism and doesn't speak spent two nights in the bush at Mount Disappointment before being found just a kilometre and a half from where he ran off. He didn't really go too far. He was clearly waiting to be rescued. And even though he had an insect in his ear and a suspected broken foot, he's been well enough to eat four large boxes of chips and some chicken nuggets. He was found yesterday morning by volunteer Ben Gibbs, who sang to Will, gave him his socks, jacket and some chocolate. I can't wait to meet him. He clearly did all the right stuff. Um, what an amazing guy. The officer in charge of the search was the one to tell Will's mum he'd been found. Letting them know, it, it, probably one of my career highlights. Um, 
Yeah, I was just so exciting to deliver that news. Police are now considering some sort of formal recognition, perhaps even an award for the volunteers involved in the search for Will, including the reluctant hero who found him, Ben Gibbs. In a year low on good news, finally a reason to celebrate. Laurel Irving, 7 News. Technology has helped in a massive ocean rescue. A frantic operation swung into action when a whale became tangled in a rope off Sydney's eastern suburbs. These exclusive pictures were taken from above as the mammal tried to pull free. Eagle-eyed friends who were flying a drone alerted authorities and then helped them track the humpback. It took less than an hour for it to be disentangled. Well, we're actually really, really, really stoked that it's actually been uh, freed itself a bit further out to sea. The whale was last seen heading south. Still to come, prison officers accused of body slamming a female inmate. What really happened at Bandy Up? Those developments next. Plus, what made a car suddenly explode in flames in Yokai? Why Tony Abbott is ending his feud with his sister for now. Our small businesses are taking on Google over bad reviews. And in sport in 10 minutes, Dennis Cometti with teams and tips, Jesse Hogan out and Cam McCarthy's shock diagnosis. Police officers, come and open the door. Real drama. You've got 10 seconds. Unfolding minute by minute. Go, go, go. The groundbreaking new era of real police drama. Game on. New Police Hour of Duty, tonight, 7.30 on 7. Style your home inside and out for less at the Blinds Gallery's new season style sale. Get huge savings across our entire range of indoor and outdoor blinds, curtains, shutters and awnings. Call 137 127 The Blinds Gallery. We used to be 24 up, we went to 20 up and can you believe it now, we are 6 up. So... If you back a side in a head-to-head -head bet and you go six points up at half time, you're a winner. We pay you out straight in your back pocket. So for an example, in round one, that's a long time ago now, seven of the nine games, they were six points or more up at half time, got paid out early. That's how the six up promo works at Sportsbet. Good luck if you're punting and do so responsibly. If you thought you couldn't afford a Ross North home, think again. Completed home startup prices you can afford. Ross North Homes, 40 years strong. We are regional Australia. We are winemakers. We are coffee roasters. Fashion designers. Potters. Bakers. Shopkeepers. We are asking for your support because the wine is pouring. The kiln is firing. And we're open for business. Because where you shop matters. Discover how Visa's network connects regional businesses to customers across Australia and the world. Find a fantastic new look for your home at the Fantastic Sale. Don't miss great prices on sofas, dining sets, kids' furniture and heaps more. These low prices won't last, so hurry. Shop online or in-store today. The Fantastic Sale is on now. For over 30 years, REST has been looking after hard-working Australians and their super. We keep our fees low, so more of your money stays where it belongs, in your super. We think long-term and we think about the risks, helping to protect your savings and your future. The world we live in is always changing, but our commitment to you never will. Hey, hon. Yeah? Oh, how funny. I'm in that aisle now. Get your Woolies worth with great... ...how JobKeeper payments could have an effect. Don't miss that story soon on 7 News. And Baz is back with more sport. Baz, a big deal for Seven. Rick, so it's fabulous news for all of us here and we've got that news coming up. Plus the teams and tips and Frio's shock. The medical diagnosis which will keep Cam McCarthy out of round one and maybe for longer. And footy's finally back with a strong message from the players. If your name appears on screen, call 9482-9939 within 30 minutes for your chance to win the ultimate footy fan cave. Thanks to Channel 7 and the West Australian. 
Good morning, sir. I'm a private detective. You're a what? Three unmissable weeks of genuinely sizzling drama. I've had no choice but to take the law into my own hands. I know what I'm doing. The new 7-2 event is Scarlet and the Duke tonight. Right now, businesses are facing their toughest challenges. Get advice and inspiration from other local businesses on cash flow, marketing and managing staff. Get the support you need at businessaustralia.com. Is Extras Cover worth it right now? Well, many healthcare providers like physios and dentists are open and ready to help you stay well. Make sure you're covered with HBF's all new Extras. Join HBF today. Everyone knows Volkswagen drivers expect a little more. Volkswagen. After supporting generations with tried and trusted pain relief, we're stretching beyond the medicine cabinet. At Panadol, we're making it our mission to help more Australians focus on staying well. Together, let's rethink care. Get vegged. Super tasty vegetarian meal solutions for everyone to enjoy. Packed full of flavour, loaded with veggies and free from artificial colours, flavours and preservatives. Get healthy, get vegged. Fibre helps feed the good bacteria in your gut. That's why with Kellogg's range of fibre cereals, millions of Aussies are helping the good bacteria in their gut to thrive. Is your gut fibre fit? Joondalup Music Centre are closing down. Hurry in for crazy prices on guitars, drums, keys and more. All stock is heavily discounted and must be sold. Open seven days. Final days. Don't miss out. Make your home beautiful with furniture from Harvey Norman. We have a huge range of quality choices and exclusive designs. Fabric and leather lounges, flexible family-friendly modulars, manual or powered recliners, sofas with the latest smart tech built in, dining suites to complement a classic or bold contemporary look, plus the very best of Australian-made lounge and dining furniture, customizable to suit your style. Shop smart, shop safe in our spacious stores and take advantage of 60 months interest-free. Available now at Harvey Norman, your furniture specialist. Did someone say KFC? I don't care. I love it. This sports report brought to you by KFC. Get your KFC contact free today. Good evening again. We begin with breaking broadcasting news tonight. Channel 7 and the AFL have reached agreement on a contract extension which will keep the footy on 7 for an extra two years. 7 West Media CEO James Warburton announced a short time ago that on top of the existing five-year deal, 7 adds 2023 and 2024 to the arrangement, keeping 7 as your free-to-air home of footy for another four years after this season. That's great news. Jesse Hogan won't play against the Gold Coast on Saturday and nor will Cam McCarthy following his diagnosis with epilepsy. Fremantle will play Brisbane on Saturday with three changes from round one. Wilson, Matera and David Mundy in. Sturt, McCarthy and Croden out. The Eagles have made just one change for their match against the Gold Coast with Oscar Allen to play in place of Tom Hickey. So we're back and it began tonight at the MCG. <laughs> Footy returned the same way it left 81 days ago. Almost. As the theme songs faded out, the silence of round one was replaced with canned crowd noise giving some semblance of atmosphere to a clash that would usually have the MCG heaving. Collingwood got the jump on arch-rivals Richmond. Going close, might have drilled at home, he has the opening goal in round two. The reigning premiers were held goalless in the first term. The Pies piled on four. The Dockers will be the first WA side back in action on Saturday. Jesse Hogan won't be out there with them. A strong hit out at training wasn't enough to convince Frio to risk him, but he isn't far away. He's really good. Uh, it's been great to have him back and um, he seems in a really good place. Cam McCarthy isn't playing either. Today, the club announced his collapse at training last week was because of epilepsy. It's manageable and won't affect his career. 
Blake Akers has had a setback to his bid for a Dockers debut. The former Saint left the track today with a calf problem and finished up early. Nick Natanui is having a better time of it on the Gold Coast, able to enjoy some freedom in a place where he's not one of the most recognisable faces around. So I went to Coles to pick up some supplies real quickly and it's the first time I've pushed a trolley in about oh, seven, eight years. So uh, no more online shopping for groceries. I'm, I'm able to walk freely. He even got some stargazing of his own in, watching Mick Fanning surf snapper rocks there as part of COVID-approved recovery. So you have to kind of walk past and admire from afar and you just got to keep doing your laps up and down. Rory Campbell, 7 News. So it's taken a while, but footy is back and so is our Hall of Famer, Dennis Committee. Dan, congrats once again. It was the Eagles. They played in the last match of round one on the 22nd of March. Can you believe that? Well, they say you're only as good as your last game, Baz, and I thought the Eagles were very good in round one against Melbourne. And what about Sam Sturt at the Dockers, the nab rising star from round one? So he's the best first year player for the last 12 weeks. <laughs> very good. How do you rate the AFL and, and the way that they've handled this very unique situation? Well, I think they've done an outstanding job, really. My only reservation is the grand final or bust mentality. What happens if they don't? get all the way to a grand final. Some people may say it's a failure. I think the fact we're playing at all is remarkable because worldwide this virus remains a very daunting opponent. Uh, what about Harley Bennell's selection? Just incredible, is it not? Yeah, it'd make a good book, wouldn't it? Mm. Good luck to him. Of course, Fremantle are saying all the right things, but they must feel a little embarrassed, particularly if he becomes a regular player at Melbourne. Well, we wish him well. Now, what about your round two selections? Mine as well. Well, Richmond, Geelong, Brisbane, Melbourne, West Coast, Port Adelaide, GWS. I've gone Essendon, you've gone Sydney, and the Western Bulldogs for both of us, Baz. Good on you, Dan. Thank you. And cheer on footy's return with your free hero poster in the West. Tomorrow you can complete your collection with your free Josh Kennedy and Luke Ryan posters only in the West Australian. That is tomorrow. The Western Force are optimistic they'll host matches during this season's rugby competition, the Super Rugby. Fixtures for the new format have been released with the Force to be based in Newcastle for their first two away games. And if border restrictions ease, the WA club will host four matches in a row through July and August as part of rugby's rebuild here in Australia. The guys are desperate to play. It's, it's their job. It's what they train. Uh, three, three, four months for to, to finally play some games. So this having the Western Force back in the competition is crucial. It's terrific. The Force opened their campaign against the New South Wales Waratahs on July 11. The International Cricket Council won't make a call on whether Australia's T20 World Cup will go ahead until next month. Cricket Australia's CEO Kevin Roberts admits the World Cup is at high risk due to the pandemic, but the ICC won't rush its decision. The best decision is to take your time with this and make sure we make the right decision going forward. So, um, yeah, I mean, it makes no difference to, to myself in terms of what I'll be doing, um, training and preparing. The World Cup is scheduled to start on October 18. Shane Van Gisbergen is the inaugural Supercars E-Series champion. Scott McLaughlin struggled at Mount Panorama in last night's final round. Handing Van Gisbergen the title, the focus now switches back to the real Supercars championship, which starts on June 27 at Eastern Creek. So the footy is back across on seven. Mate, it's half time at the moment, so you can get back there after the weather with Amelia half time. Collingwood 33. Richmond 19. Rick and Sue. Momentous night, Baz. Thank you. Thanks, the man. pandemic is about to hit another important point on the calendar, tax time. Many of those whose lives have been disrupted are wondering what effects JobKeeper and working from home might have. The good news is it could mean a cash bonus. Fitness consultant Ben Donhart has had enough to stress about in recent months. We had a complete stop of income. So for the last, since I think it's 16th of March, 7th of March, everything stopped. Now Ben, like millions of Australians, must explain his unusual circumstances to the tax office. Payments due to job disruption, like income protection or insurance, are taxable and must be declared. But... Any amount that is withdrawn as part of the early release arrangement for superannuation is a tax-free amount. JobKeeper, at $1,500 a fortnight, is taxable. If someone previously earned less than that, they might be pushed over the tax-free threshold. And they'll have to pay that additional tax on that amount. But if you earn less than expected this year, you might have paid too much tax already and be owed a bigger refund. 
and don't forget. If you need anything to do your job from home in this, in this environment that we've got at the moment, uh, in most cases they are deductible. That includes all running costs, such as heating, lighting, power, your phone and internet, and depreciation on your home office. You can itemise every expense, or just claim 80 cents for each hour worked from home from March 1 to June 30. Check the Tax Office website for a Tax Time Essentials list that discusses the major changes impacting our lives this year and how they affect your tax return. Gemma Acton, 7 News. Amelia Bruins got your weather next and Millie, we had plenty of showers today. Is there more rain on the way tomorrow? There sure is, Sue. We've got another wet day ahead and some areas could get a storm. I'll tell you where after the break. Go on. You know you want to. Home and away. Weeknights on 7. Coronavirus hit our business hard, but we managed to adapt to takeaway pretty quickly and the locals really got behind us. With some government help, we've managed to keep the doors open and most of our staff employed. It's been tough for sure, but I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. So yeah, we're getting there. Easing restrictions to get small business back to work is part of a staged and carefully planned roadmap for WA. A shared journey that we're all in together. Authorised by the State Government Perth. One better, two better, three better, four. Pink, purple, orange, whatever colour door. This is your place, your haven, your home. A nest for your loved ones, the odd quirky gnome. Training indoors, more time with your crew. Yoga, then tea, yes, a biscuit or two. Enjoy your castle, get comfy, get cosy. Hang with your besties, it's all rosy. Home is where the heart is. Bankwest, bank less. Boys, have you built your six pack yet? A six pack? You can load it up with any six players to kick the first goal. You got it. Okay, yeah. I'm... With the six pack, you can take the AFL to the Neds level. At HCF, Australia's largest not-for-profit health fund, we know the importance of care when it counts. That's why eligible members can access our holistic mental wellbeing program with the flexibility to choose what works for you. HCF, that's uncommon care. Don't miss Region Power's 17-year anniversary special. Massive 6.6 kilowatt solar system. European manufactured inverter. Fully installed for just $42.90. Call Region Power today on 1800 Region. Visit regionpower.com. You're relying on our network more. So we're accelerating the rollout of Telstra 5G. Giving more people and businesses access to fast download speeds in more places than ever. Mechanical services and repairs, air conditioning, electrical and lighting repairs. AutoSpark will find, fix, regas or service it with the best advice. If your car won't start, call AutoSpark. ECU's teaching quality has consistently been rated amongst the best in the country. Their academics are the bridge between your world and the whole world. We're open. Open for catch-ups with friends. Open for new winter fashion. For drool-worthy burgers with mates. For all those special things you can't find anywhere else. Shopping in real life in the great outdoors with fresh air and everything. And taking advantage of $10 all-day parking and free short-stay street parking. Getting back to kind of normal feels kind of awesome. See you in the city. The footy is back. At Perth, we've got a Super Saturday direct from the hub. First up on 7, Frio face the Lions at 11.30. Then 5.30 on late, West Coast take on Gold Coast. No problem. Go to the footy on 7. The best time of day to lose weight, dawn, lunch or evening. New research revealing when is best and how much is too much. 7 News at 6. Tonight's top stories on 7 News. A young couple on a stolen dirt bike are fighting for life after being horrifically injured in a hit and run in Perth's East. Police are urging the driver to hand himself in. WA police will ignore calls by the Prime Minister to charge people joining in a Black Lives Matter rally in Perth 
on Saturday. Football is officially back. Tonight at the MCG, Collingwood and Richmond ran out to an empty stadium, kick-starting the AFL's return. And Fremantle forward Cam McCarthy has been diagnosed with epilepsy after he collapsed at training last week. And Amelia Brune is back with your forecast now. We've got some more of that wet weather ahead, Millie. We sure do, Sue. We certainly got a drenching right around Perth and the rain will continue tomorrow. Our maximum today was 22 degrees after a relatively mild night and 11 days in, we are still having our warmest June on record with an average maximum of 23.6. Right now, winds are light and humidity is 74%. The rain started coming down just as most of us were waking up this morning. Since 6am, the city's had 20 mils of rain, Kalamunda's had 22, 10 mils has fallen at Jandicott and 19 in Mandra. The low pressure system is moving east but only after dumping some big rainfall totals, particularly in our southwest. Dardanup had almost 60 mils and Bunbury had 38. Another cold front will move across the south of the state tonight and that means more rain. Sunny in Melbourne tomorrow, 15 degrees, morning fog for Canberra and a possible shower in Sydney. Sunny skies in our our north, but a stark contrast in our south, possible storms and rain for Bunbury, Margaret River and Esperance. There's a strong wind warning for local waters tomorrow with squalls up to 45 knots possible. So showers and storms right around our suburbs tomorrow and temperatures will range between 17 and 21. Up to 10 mils of rain for Perth with the chance of a morning storm, 18 the top, clearing to a shower or two on Saturday, more rain on Sunday and it's looking wet for most of next week. Congratulations to James and Jenny Nagel, who are celebrating their 60th wedding anniversary today. Also celebrating 60 years are Ronald and Patricia Armstrong from Ashby. And this is Jack and Stella Earnshaw of Wembley, who are celebrating 75 years of marriage. Now for tonight's winning lotto numbers for draw 1256. They are 17, 28, 26, 1, 14, 22, 33 and the Powerball is 9. Those numbers again, 17, 28, 26, 1, 14, 22, 33 and the Powerball is 9. Here are Rick and Sue. Thanks, Millie. That's 7 News for this Thursday. And don't forget, we'll have updates throughout the evening. You can also find the latest stories on our website at 7news.com.au and follow us, of course, on Facebook. Enjoy the rest of your night here on 7.